there are many raster images available. They could be from the internet, or they could be from aerial or satellite platforms, remotely sensed images, which we know are rasters as well. And so georeferencing is the act of giving coordinates in the real world to these types of rasters. Once we give coordinates, that's called georeferencing. And then we can persist a georeferenced layer into a permanently new raster by overlaying a new raster in the projected or transformed space and rectifying it. And that means resampling again and transferring values to the new cells. At that point, we have a georeferenced and rectified layer. Rectification of an image is a multi-step process. First, we have to determine a set of control points. Control points are things that you can see. In a real world coordinate system, reference map, that could be street corners, fire hydrants, and that you can also see on the raster image, whether it's a satellite image or a thematic image. And so we record the coordinates of the thing, let's say it's a fire hydrant. We record those coordinates in the column and row coordinate system of the raster and where they are in the real world. And that those four numbers represent a single control point. And we use a number of those. And then we apply equations that will transform the raster into the real world coordinate system. So we get those control points first, and then we use the control points to cal calculate the geometric transformation that's necessary to bring our raster, which has no coordinate system except for column and rows, into the real world. Once we calculate that transformation, we apply it to the, each coordinate for each cell in an image. And that then brings it into the real world, and it's now georeferenced. And we'll go through these step by step in following slides. Once it's in the real world coordinate system, undoubtedly 99.99% .99 of the time, the raster will not be orthogonal. It will be scaled or warped in some way so that the cells are no longer oriented north, south, east, west. And so we have to then create a no value raster in the new spatial domain. That's the real world reference system. And then transfer the values from the old raster to the new raster through resampling, which you now know what that means. Here is a flowchart of the process that was described in detail on the previous slide, with a few things missing just to show the general workflow. We start with a raster and we get control points. We georeference that so that we warp and scale that raster so that it fits with our real world reference map. Then we overlay a new raster so that we can rectify and have that new raster then representing our original raster with a real world coordinate system. So don't get these two terms confused. Georeferencing is the act of assigning coordinates to an existing raster, and rectification is when we persist that coordinate system to a brand new raster by resampling. So we then have a new raster that's orthogonally oriented in the real world. So let's look at the first step in more detail. The act of getting control points so that we can georeference a raster. So in order to georeference a raster, we need to get column and row coordinates and real world coordinates to correspond to each column and row coordinate for some identifiable thing in the real world. In doing so, we have two different layers to work with. We have a target or reference layer. That's the image 
It could be another map of roads, or it could be a thematic map, etc., that's already in the real world coordinate system that we want to bring the raster into. So we'll call that the reference layer, and it has a defined coordinate system. Now, as a general rule, when undertaking control point collection, the reference data or layer should be in a projected rectilinear coordinate system. That means not long lat. So you should already have a reference in a coordinate system which is projected. We don't generally do these type of transformations in longitude latitude because the equations that are used in ArcGIS to georeference are for two-dimensional systems, not three-dimensional systems like longitude latitude. The reference layer itself that has the real world coordinate system could be anything, a vector layer, another raster layer, as long as there are things that are easily identifiable in both the raster to be georeferenced and the reference layer. Once we have those, we collect ground control points known as XY coordinates that link the locations on the raster data set in column row with locations in XY of the spatially referenced data or the target data, the reference layer. And again, we have to make sure that the control points are easily identifiable in both the reference layer and within the raster to be georeferenced. Let's look at an example of how this is done. On the right hand side of this figure we see red lines. These are streets. They are in a known real world coordinate system. In this case these streets happen to be in a modified transverse mercator zone 9 coordinate system. So that's in meters, and everything is rectilinear in that coordinate system because it's two-dimensional. Then we have, just underneath the red lines, the streets, we have a image that was taken from the internet that is just displayed beneath here because it's been georeferenced already. How it was georeferenced was by finding common points called control points. On the right, an example of a control point in row two. Here we have the X image and Y image. These are the column and row coordinates. So column and row. Right next to those on the right, we have the real world coordinates that correspond to that column and row. So those are the real world coordinates. And you'll see that we have in this case, six of them in total. Just below that table is an example of row two, where we have found a red street or a red street or part of a path, whatever the real world reference layer represents. And then where it should be on the column and row pixel coordinates of the raster. And notice there's a two and a two right here that represent that's control point two. And these are chosen interactively in ArcGIS Pro to build this thing called the link table. Once it's there, ArcGIS Pro will georeference the image. And that means displaying it within the real world coordinate system of the reference layer, which is streets in this case. Now that we have seen the control point table, that is used in step two that we discussed to calculate the geometric transformation parameters to georeference the raster into the real world coordinate system. Now there are two types of geometric transformations 
exact, and stochastic. Exact uses predefined equations that take column and row x and y values in some function to equal x out and y out. Exact simply means that it's an equation. Exact does not have anything to do with accuracy. So accuracy has nothing to do with the term exact. Exact simply means that for the same x and y coordinate that you put in, you will always have the same x, y coming out, whatever those two may be. Where here, the input x, y is a column and row. Maybe let's make that a bit clearer here. So column and row in equals x out, y out in the reference layer system. coordinate system. The most common two types of exact transformations are affine, which we'll go into detail on, and projective. Projective is only used when we have or we need to go from one real world coordinate system with a raster to another real world coordinate system with the same raster then we use projection equations to do so. The affine transformation is a two-dimensional transformation whereby the original raster can be scaled, scaled, rotated, and translated in space to make it line up with the real world coordinate system. The second type of georeferencing geo that we can undertake are stochastic georeferencing. And stochastic georeferencing is also called warping. So it can take nth order polynomial transformations to produce the georeferenced raster. And by doing so, certain parts of the raster can be translated, rotated, and scaled differently from other parts of the raster. And it's rarely needed anything more than a second degree polynomial, which is the same as an affine transformation. So 99% of the time, an affine transformation is used, either in a stochastic form where the parameters of the affine transformation are determined through statistical least squares measures. So 99% of the time, affine is the transformation that's used. It can be exact when we have three control points. Which means that for some types of rasters, especially ones that occur in very small areas, so large scale maps or large scale rasters, often three control points is enough to orient the new raster, orient the raster, I should say, into the reference system, coordinate system. And in that case, it's exact because it just uses matrix algebra to undertake that transformation. When we have more than three control points, four to an infinite number of control points, then we use stochastic means to get the affine transformation parameters. And so affine is the recommended transformation for most applications for georeferencing a raster to the real world. So an affine transformation looks like this. It's a first order polynomial transformation that can georeference images to real world coordinates. And it looks like this. X out and Y out represent the new coordinates in the reference coordinate system, the same coordinate system as the reference image. And then we have X image and Y image right here. Likewise, X image and Y image right here. So X image and Y image 
in both of these represent a column and a row. So y is a row, x is a column. So for a given column and row, these equations will transform that into an x coordinate and this equation at the bottom will transfer that transform it into a y coordinate. Now, what's our, what we have to figure out, we can't use it as is here because we have to know the parameters. We have these parameters a, b, c, d, e, and f. It's called six in total, so that's a six parameter. Um, six parameters or six unknowns that have to be solved for. And these parameters uh, allow the image that is, an, is within an unknown coordinate system to be scaled, rotated, translated, and skewed so that it can warp itself into the new coordinate system space. And to use this method, we require at least three control points, GCPs, ground control points. Each of these has a specific meaning. For example, A is the width of the cell in map units. B is a rotation term. C is the X coordinate of the upper left cell center. D is a rotation term. Negative cell height in map units. And F is a uh, Y map coordinate in the upper left cell center. So some of these are just found uh, quickly, you know, by examining an image. But because we have six unknown parameters, uh, we, need, we need at least three control points to solve that, e that set of equations and do an affine transformation. Um, so once we have a table like this, we can find from that table through linear regression these parameters as well. So if we have more than three, we need three to do an exact transformation, but if we have more than three, then we use linear regression to solve for these parameters because there's going to be uncertainty involved, or esti uncertainty is estimable. We can estimate it based on a link table like that. So with three, we can solve it exactly with a system of linear equations, which I'll show you next. But that doesn't mean it's more exact. It just uh, or, or more accurate or anything else. But when we and generally three is not enough, so we would have more than three, and then we have an estimate of the uh, uncertainty within the new coordinate system of the transformation. Those parameters themselves, once they're estimated, either by an exact estimation or through linear regression, you know, A to F, they're stored in a what's called a world file that goes along with the image that has no coordinate system. And that then ArcGIS Pro knows to look at that image file to find the coordinates or to know how to translate the coordinates from column and row into real world coordinates. So that world file you'll see uh, is something that is produced when you um, georeference an image. So it doesn't change any of the values of the coordinates column and row in the original image, but simply tells ArcGIS how to translate them from column and row into X and Y coordinates in the real world uh, system of the reference image. If we have more than three control points, that means four or more, then we get the parameters A through to F by using multiple linear regression. In this link table here, we can see that we have six GCPs. So ground control points, six of them. And when we have six ground control points, then we use linear regression to estimate the parameters A to F. And more importantly, is when we do use linear regression, we can get an estimate of the uncertainty of the transformation. And that would be an uncertainty of 
geo-referencing that particular image. And that uncertainty would be added to any of the base map uncertainties that you geo-reference that image to, to get a overall uncertainty for your geo-referencing. Here we have a worked example of using multiple linear regression to estimate the parameters a to f. On the left hand side is the Python code where I, that I put together for you to do this if you want to try it. We won't go into it in detail because this is not something here that you need to do for any, any particular reasons, but it's good to know how to do it in case you need to do this for multiple images, for example. It makes it very quick and fast to derive those parameters. The code here on the right hand side of the screen just is a means by which we can write out to a file, for example, to a world file called JGW for a JPG image, the parameters in the correct order for ArcGIS Pro to recognize so that when you bring the image or raster of Alaska birch into ArcGIS, it will place it in the correct location for the coordinate system that it was geo-referenced to. But this does not rectify the image. Again, when the world file is here, it's just geo-referenced. So this only allows for geo-referencing and not rectification. Now with only three points, we can get an exact solution. So we don't use linear regression, but rather we use matrix algebra, which is the inverse of one matrix multiplied by another matrix like you see here. Now you don't have to know this in detail in any way, shape or form, but the idea you have to know is that with three points, you have um, an affine transformation that can take place to scale, rotate, um, translate your source image into the coordinate system of your reference map. So here, for example, we see three, one, two, and three. And so we would enter those coordinates in these matrix right here. So X, Y of the first point, X, Y of the second point, X, Y of the third point. And again, those are column and row coordinates for one, two, and three. Then for one, two, and three, we put the real world coordinates in the reference map system. So the X, Y, X, Y, X, Y, and this is to make a homogeneous coordinates for matrix inversion. So that this matrix has to be inverted and there's, you don't have to worry about how that's done. I'll give you a little bit of information there on matrix inversion. Um, but what you have to know is once that's multi the inverse of this is multiplied by this one here, we have our transformation parameters, A to F, right there. And those are the parameters that ArcGIS Pro uses to geo-reference the image so that it can put the image coordinates for each pixel of the source into the real-world coordinate system of the reference layer. And I'm just showing here how you could do that in um, Python if you wanted to be keen and go through that and try to understand that you can but again you don't have to know the details of this for the exam what you need to know is that with three points an affine exact transformation can happen now exact doesn't mean accurate we don't know what the uncertainty is with this type of transformation which makes it less suitable uh, when trying to estimate uncertainty of the transformation because you can't get it with just three points so most of the time we're using more than three points this is just the Python code from the previous slide so that it's easier to see or to study the flow of undertaking the affine transformation using matrix algebra in Python. Once you have the A to F parameters here, then these or this matrix is multiplied again by a matrix with the column and row coordinates here. And that produces an X out and a Y out in the reference coordinate system 
the real world coordinate system for each column and row. So once that's done, I just show that whole process here because it's just basic matrix multiplication. You end up with that for this particular column and row value right here. And that can then be quickly done for every single cell column and row. And that's how the georeferencing is done and it's put into the uh, real world coordinate system. If you work through it, for interest, you'll be able to follow it. It's step by step there. The final step involved in georeferencing is rectification. And all the matrix algebra that I showed you on the previous couple slides is completed by the warp function of ArcGIS Pro. All we have to feed into the warp function is a set of XY coordinates from the image to the map. In other words, we need three control points. And they have to be formatted like this. So within a large quote, so double quotes, we have single quote strings, which in this case are the XY, 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 all in column rule co coordinates. Then in the same format, we have the real world coordinates that correspond to that. So as you can see, that number corresponds to that number pair. That's from the first row up here. Once we have those two strings formulated in that particular format, we can use the warp function of ArcPy management. We send in our non-referenced image. We send the from points and then the two points like so. The name of our output, the type of transformation we want, poly order one. So that's a, we're going to know that's a um, affine. And then the type of resampling that we want to have happen. And since we're doing this just for the visual aspect of the, the Alaska birch image, we choose bilinear. If you were doing this with real data, let's say that is of a nominal level, so categorical data, you would make sure to put nearest in there instead of bilinear. So that's very important. And once that is run, you have a new image called test J in this case that has all of the cells cardinally oriented and you have a new raster in a new coordinate system. Let's talk about the root mean squared error or RMSE. This is something that provides an indication of the accuracy of your transformation when you are georeferencing. So the root mean squared error is simply equal to the sum of the individual control point errors squared over n, and then the square root of that. So it's a very simple calculation, and it will be presented to you when you do an interactive georeferencing and rectification in ArcGIS Pro. You will only ever see the RMSE, of course, if you have four or more control points, because once you have three control points, you get an exact affine transformation, which has nothing to do with accuracy. N nor does the RMSE tell you that your map is accurate. It is just about the transformation uncertainty. So you want to have a low RMSE because the RMSE is always going to be in the reference units. So the reference map units. And these are usually going to be meters. Since you, one of our rules of georeferencing is that 
we have to have a reference layer that is in a rectilinear coordinate system. And most of those are meters. So when you look at RMSC, you're looking at how many meters off or how I mean the error of your transformation in meters. <clears throat> now, just because you have a low RMSE, it doesn't mean you have a good registration. It just means that the consistency between the points, the control points, is um, very good and precise. So it's really a measure of precision uh, more than accuracy if you when you start to think about it. So the only way to really assess if you have a good georeferencing is by looking at your map to see whether that RMSE is something that's telling us about accuracy or telling us something about precision. And Developing a low RMSE is the uh, main way that you want to go about under uh, co collecting control points. And generally, control points should be collected in an X fashion. So in that type of X fashion, if possible, that's where you want to get your control points and then assess the RMSE. If it's high, look at the individual contributions of each control point to the two total RMSE and remove the one with the largest purport, the largest uh, contribution to the RMSE and see if the total RMSE becomes lower. And so it becomes a bit of an art of trial and error to get a good RMSE overall for your transformation. When you're happy with the RMSE, then you rectify. Now keep in mind the RMSE must be reported and that is added to any uncertainty that already existed in the map that you are using. So you have to add all the uncertainty in the reference map to this RMSE to understand the raster and then also the cell uncertainty. So it's an accumulative error. Every process and step accumulates more uncertainty. And this is the uncertainty due to registration only. Um, with rasters.